What's up, YouTube? I'm here to do my predictions for UFC 189. Let's start at the bottom. Um, the first fight is Yundo Sendos versus Cody Spitzfer. Now I'll pick Sendos. Um, I don't think I'm saying these names right, but <laughs> I think his karate and his wrestling is going to be the thing that makes him just the better fighter in this fight. I think he'll be able to stuff the takedowns and just keep this fight in a karate style fight. And I say he wins by KO, probably in the first or second round. Next, we got Neil Sferi versus Lewis Slomoke. And I'm going to pick Lewis. I think these guys have the same style, but Lewis's ceiling is much higher. And I think his potential to get better is much better. And we're going to. And I think he's looked better in every single fight he's had in the UFC. So I think he's going to look better in this fight. And I think Neil Sferi is just, you know, not going to be at the same level as, as um, Lewis. Next, we got Cody Garbant versus Henry Boris. And. I feel they're kind of just feeding Cody a fight here. They want to give him some fights before they get him top 15 guys, which I'm fine with. I feel like it's better to give guys, slowly put guys into that spot where they fight for top 15 guys. So I think he wins by second round KO. And I, like I said, I think they're kind of giving him a win, but I think they should slowly build him up instead of just blast him with tough guys right off the bat. So next is uh, Cajal Pendred versus John Howard. And I see this being a one side. I, I think that... Cajal has been kind of lucky in his career so far in the UFC. I mean, he's basically been fighting one-dimensional guys, either guys that are only wrestlers or guys that are, like, only strikers. He hasn't fought somebody who's well-rounded. And, I mean, even though John Howard's lost three in a row, he's definitely the best guy, in my opinion, that um, Cajal's fought so far in the UFC. And I think John Howard's going to win by KO. I think his striking and his overall grappling game are both better than Cajal's. I think Cajal's only advantage is probably the wrestling. But I think um, sooner or later, John's going to catch him with a knockout punch because his striking is at least two or three levels higher than Cajal's. So I'm going to pick John Howard by KO, and I know it's a pretty big upset, but I'm still going to pick John Howard. Next is Alex Garcia versus Mike Swick. And I like Mike Swick. I want him to win, but the simple fact is he's not going to win. He hasn't fought in, like, two years. And if you look at his thing, he's fought, like, two times in the last, like, five or six years. He's just really inactive. He's got his own gym now. I feel like this is kind of like his retirement fight. And I feel like, you know, Alex Garcia kind of fights a lot like how Mike Swick does. I just think he's a younger, more modern version of Mike Swick, and I think he's going to win by KO probably in the first round. Next, we got Tim Means versus Matt Brown. And I think striking-wise, these guys are dead even, but I think wrestling and jiu-jitsu-wise, it's a huge advantage for Matt Brown. I feel like anywhere on the ground this fight is taking place, whether Matt Brown's on top or on bottom, he's going to have a big advantage. And Matt Brown's the type of guy, he does mix it up. I think people just kind of look at him as a striker, but he has great jiu-jitsu. I think his jiu-jitsu is almost just as good as his striking, even though he's been submitted a lot. I think his submission defense isn't that great because he has such good submission offense that he leaves himself open. It's not so much that he isn't a good jiu-jitsu fighter, it's just that he leaves stuff open because he likes to attack. But I don't think Tim Means' jiu-jitsu is good enough to catch Matt Brown. And I think Matt Brown's definitely going to catch Tim Means sooner or later. So I say Matt Brown wins by submission probably first or second round. On the main card, we got Brad Pickett versus Thomas Almeida. And I think this fight is a lot closer than people think it is. I think Brad Pickett will probably lose the first round, maybe the first two rounds. But I think come the third, he'll probably um, be able to get hit, establish his takedowns a little bit more. Like, the first round, I definitely see him losing, and I think if he can weather that early storm, he'll we'll see, come second round, he'll start to win, then third round, he'll probably win by submission. I do think this is probably going to be the fight at the night, though, just to throw that out there. So I'm going to pick Pickett by submission, but this is definitely one of the closest fights on the whole card, because I definitely could see Almeida winning by first round KO. But I'm still going to pick Pickett by submission. Next is Gunnar Nelson versus Brandon Thatch. And this is another fight where I feel like as long as Thatch just stays kind of compact, he should be able to win. The only way I see him losing this is if he kind of just gets too wild and lets, leaves openings for Gunnar to take him down and win by submission. I feel like as long as he fights um, more compact and more conservative and doesn't leave anything open and doesn't rush anything, he should be able to win the kickboxing match and be able to stuff all the takedowns. So I've got Thatch by decision. Next is Jeremy Stevens versus Dennis Bermudez. And I feel like this fight's going to be like the Guida fight, but more dominant for Bermudez. I think Bermudez has looked better in every fight he's had, minus the fight against um, Ricardo Lamas, but that's one fight out of, like, eight. He was on a seven-fight win streak, I think, before that. So, I mean, I think this is going to be exactly like the Guida fight, but more dominant, because I don't think Jeremy Stevens' wrestling is as good as Guida's. 
I think Bermuda is going to put him against the fence, beat on him, take him down, beat him up with ground and pound, and eventually win by Rene choke, probably in the second round. Next, we got Rory McDonald versus Robbie Lawler. And I noticed Rory's a huge favorite in this fight, and I don't know why. I don't think people remember that Robbie Lawler almost knocked him out and already has a win over him. So I think the same thing's going to happen like in the last couple Rory McDonald fights. I think he's going to win the first two rounds, probably play dominantly, and then he'll start to get tired, and he won't be able to do the dominant cruise dance as well as he does in the first two rounds. And Robbie's going to start catching him in the third. And then come the fourth round, he's not going to be able to move as well as he did in the first two rounds. And Robbie's going to knock him out. So I think Robbie Lawler's going to win by fourth round KO. I don't know why all of a sudden Roy just seems way better than he has. I don't think he's looked that different his last couple of fights than he has in the fights before it. So I still think Robbie Lawler's better. It's just going to look like Roy's better in the first, first two rounds. But once he starts to slow down, which he will because he always does, that's when I think Robbie's going to start taking, picking him apart and winning by knockout. And finally, the main event, Chad Mendes versus Conor McGregor. You know, I said this fight wasn't... I knew that Jose Aldo or Conor McGregor, one of them was getting hurt. I was like, there's no way. There, I would have bet anything that one of them got hurt. And they did. I was like, because the way they were hyping this fight out, like five months before it even happened, they are asking for this, someone to get injured. So, just saying. That's my opinion. And I was right. <laughs> I think this fight is a tougher fight for McGregor because this is actually a guy who will mix it up and shoot for takedowns and throw strikes, and it won't just be a kickboxing match. That being said, I still am going to pick McGregor. I think McGregor just uses his better striking, and I think this fight will be a lot like the Dennis Seaver fight. I think he's going to win by second-round knockout, maybe third-round knockout. But like I said, this is the fight we're really going to see what Connor's made of because if he can't stop those takedowns, he'll lose probably in the first two rounds. If he can't stop those takedowns, Chad Mendes is going to obliterate him. But I, I'm going to bet that Conor McGregor can stop the takedowns and just use his better striking, and he's going to win by knockout probably in the second or third round. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I'm going to put my prediction video up for the Ultimate Fighter finale. If you guys didn't know, that's also this weekend. I think it's Sunday, the day after this card. So look forward to that. I love this season of the Ultimate Fighter. I thought it was really good. It didn't start off great, but the second half was super good. And I'll talk about that when I make that video. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe.